Beautiful night for a fire. for an afternoon paddle. I brought everything and then some except Tucker. I decided to leave him home for the afternoon. Nice to get out without him once in a while. Uh, I like this dock somebody built. It's really nice. So we're gonna paddle up here a little ways and hopefully on to another lake and then into another lake even if we can make it that far in the little time slot we have. We're going to try. Alright, here we go. Alright, we are off. We'll see how far we can get. It's already 20 after 2. Beautiful sunny day. Typical northern Ontario weather again. It's uh, 16 Celsius right now. But again, they're calling for snow tomorrow morning. Down to like minus one or something overnight. It'll be interesting. <laughs> And on our right is the first campsite. Very small one, mind you. Video from last year, I stopped there with my other canoe, my 100 pound squareback canoe. <laughs> stopped there for a quick break, Tucker and I. We're not even a kilometer in yet. <laughs> we don't need to break yet. Woodpecker, just echoes. Couldn't ask for a nicer day out here. Shallow, very shallow, we're gonna hit, oh maybe not. <laughs> so clear the water.
just looks like we're coming to the end of the lake. Oh, the end of this lake. There's a little tiny passage here we can sneak through. Get up on the ham and a nip. Not full of logs or something. That would really suck. Might be. Hopefully we can sneak right through there. And that'll put us up on the Ammon and Nipissing Lake. Hopefully we find the portage into Whitewater. That's where I'm thinking of going. You see, we have enough time. It's, we got lots of daylight left. Oh no, the tree. I came up through here with my big 100 pound freighter canoe, so I'm sure I can get through there with this. You can find out, I guess. And the water's a lot higher now than it was the time I came through with the freighter. Twice the heights, man. Lots of water. Alright, we got paddle against the current here. I know there's a big rock right here. Yeah. Gotta go around that. Uh, across this end part here. Yeah, yeah, we'll get through there. Come on. There you go. <laughs> I'll have to watch that coming back though. Indigenous could get through here for the last thousand years. I'm sure, I can. <laughs> I hear a waterfall. There's a campsite right here on the point, too. We might check that out later. Ice out trip, that's what I was gonna do is set up a base camp somewhere along here, a few campsites in this part of the lake, and then just go exploring all the other lakes around here for a couple of days. But we gotta wait till the government gives us the okay for camping. 
Apparently you'll get COVID if you stay overnight. I know along here somewhere there is pictographs. Just checking that flat rock, but I don't see any on that one. Of course, some of them are so faint they're fading away. Pretty amazing landscape. That's why I live here. <laughs> Definitely some orange on there. Usually they're red though. Oh, I'm lazy. Didn't really 
really look like pictographs. Orange definitely stood out. Still a little bit of ice. It is only April. April 29th, almost to May. Almost like watching ice melt. <laughs> the other side like look at that I mentioned how much I love living here I love my district <laughs> okay. I see some sort of marker in the tree up here Portage should be in this area. I'm gonna guess it's right in there somewhere. We're gonna find out in a second. Damn, I didn't get it. Another duck came out of the Little cove to the left here and scared them all up and they all went flying down the lake. Like, oh, that would have been a cool shot. Of course, the camera wasn't rolling. Yeah, this looks like the trail right here. Bunch of them up in here. <laughs> I'll leave it to me. Found a campsite. <laughs> it's not the portage, so I'm like, I don't think this is it. I started walking up in the bush and everything over there. Nice little rapids and everything coming down, which is nice. Beautiful spot for a, put your tent and everything. Like, look at the views here. I don't know, let's take a little walk and see. I'd imagine somebody would make a trail from the campsite to the portage. But maybe not. Another big flat spot for a tent. <laughs> so 
Oh, the yellow brick road. There's a light on a fire here. <laughs> All right, well, there's the little bay. So maybe that trail I was walking goes over to it. This is nice though, man. So nicer. Awesome. This is just a campsite here. You know he brought too much when you include the kitchen sink. Like, what the hell, man? That ain't mine. I just thought, you know what? Let's just put the stuff back in the canoe and go around the point to find the real portage. <laughs> Instead of bushwhacking her. I don't mind bushwhacking her now and then, but... I know there's a good portage here. Almost getting hungry for supper. Better get to that next campsite. I forgot my map of the lake, <laughs> but I have a GPS on my phone, so I knew it was in a little bay. I thought, I don't think this is the bay. So I pulled up my GPS and said, oh, there's another bay around the point here. And it showed a trail off of it. Looks more like a portage sign. <laughs> yeah, the bay comes in quite a bit. That would have been a lot of bushwalking to get over here. So, I think I'm going to bring all the bags across first. I could probably just about do it in one carry, but it's a short portage, so. Well, the bears are out. <laughs> yeah. So, apparently, there's a lost cat in there. Alright, I'll be on the lookout for Bella. Good luck. <laughs> Hey bear! I'm gonna keep the bears to know that I'm here. Don't want to sneak up on one and scare it. Oh, there's a lake here. I'm like. Trail continues. So I see a bunch of boats stashed here. So this must be it. I'm assuming. That wasn't too bad at all. Well, it's only 100 meters. So. Oh, that's why it's all sucky muck. 
And the other pudding is better. I'll go check it out. Alright, back to get the canoe. What? Very much small to me in all the rocks. I'm out of shape. But we're there, I see the water. There's water after that one. That was uh, officially the first portage I've done with this canoe, other than put-ins and stuff where you had to walk it a little ways, but this is the first lake-to-lake -lake one for this canoe. <sighs> and we're off once again. We're officially on Whitewater Lake now. The good thing is that portage will be all downhill on the way back. <laughs> Alright, now the, this is just a little lake and at the end there's a campsite. I think we're gonna try and cook up some supper and then head back before the sun goes down. It is 10 to 5. Uh oh. We might be getting back in the dark. Should have brought my binoculars. I swore I heard a moose walking through the water over there. There was a loud snap and then a goosh, goosh. It looks like there's a cottage or something up there, too. Which is weird. I didn't think there's any cottages up here. Oh well. Alright, well, there's the island. I'm gonna eat on down there. But, I think I'm gonna make the executive decision here. It has taken me two and a half hours to get to this point. It's already ten after five. And sunset's about 7.30. So I'm just going to turn around and uh, maybe at the end of the portage or something, or go back to that little campsite that I was just at, yeah. I'll pull up there and make something to eat because we're going to run out of daylight before we get back to the truck. Alright, that's what we're going to do. Curiosity got the best of me. Had to come over and check it out. It looks to be just a hunt camp. Yeah, not much bigger than a nice hut. Doesn't work for a hunt camp. The portage. Or portage, as they say in the U.S. I use both. The uh, time I spend in the U.S. trucking, I'm just about half American. <laughs> Alright, now I'm 
canoe's turn. See what we're doing. It's a long hundred meters. But when you double carry, it's really three hundred. Sucky muck. Moose track. Moose tracks, bear tracks. They use this trail too. What was that? I just heard something. Maybe somebody coming in camping? <laughs> Thought I heard voices. Okay. Hey. Maybe they heard me yelling hey bear and thought I was in trouble. I don't know, we'll find out when we get down there. Yeah, definitely going to get that pad for this. It's already padded, but it still digs into my shoulders. Just not quite thick enough. Contact Swift. I'm sure they got some. Ooh, bugs all over me. Black flies are coming out. If we went wet. <sighs> Downhill's a lot easier. All right. I think right here's a good spot. Good spot for supper. Picnic area is up here, but could probably cook right on the rocks here. I'm just gonna get my little twig stove going again. All right, once again, just using a twig stove. We're just gonna cook up one of those fancy canor meals. Um, do I have it in here? Yeah. It's in this bag. Don't get too wet. Yeah, creamy bacon carbonara. We're gonna cook up that. A couple extra hot dogs left over from the other day out. Eat that real quick because it's already 6.08 and we got at least an hour paddling. At least we're going with the current on the way back.
flamage coming up. <laughs> Watch the flames coming up the side. Almost got burnt me. That almost burnt me. Got burnt me, huh? Can't even speak. I'm so hungry. Hungry, hungry. Cook this up real quick. We're losing daylight pretty quick too. It's all right. All right, and bon appetit. Here's my little dish. Tucker's not here to help me. I'm eat that real quick, and then we'll get paddling. All right, I just paddled like hell to get to this point. There's that campsite again. Right before the Narrows. And I know from the Narrows, it's like three kilometers back to the truck. You gotta stick to the right. Like it's shallower over there, but the water is high enough that we got through the last time. So. It's going pretty good. Just like that. Alright, now we're on McLean. Big rock. <laughs> Just cleared that one. So we got about three kilometers to go. I think we'll make it with enough light. There's a sound I miss. Uh, spring peepers. <laughs> Sitting around the fire, camping. case piling back to the truck because the government thinks we're gonna get COVID by camping out I don't know it doesn't make sense all I can say is they better open her up by the May long weekend or I'll be breaking the law I don't care what they say. Just you guys won't get to see it because I won't be able to film them up kind of stuff. Like my nephew said, just go. Who cares? <laughs> I said, well, it's hard to make a YouTube video when you're breaking the law, so 
We'll keep her legal for now. Up here, the balloons are nasty. I'm sorry, I'm gonna leave you alone. Those are ducks, but that was a loon. The loon was going after them. Hope that's in frame. That was fun. We gotta get piling. Holy cow, I see the finish line. And we made it back with enough daylight to strap everything down. I thought I'd be doing that in the dark for sure. My arms are burning pretty good though, I was hooping her. <laughs> pretty good. I did 20k today in like oh, just over five and a half hours. That's not bad at all. Not bad for an afternoon out. I might have done more than 20k because I followed the shoreline all the way up. Way back I was cutting corners and going across the bay. <laughs> Screw that. <laughs> the quickest way back. Way lighter than the other canoe. <laughs> up, up, and away. There's a truck. Still here, no one stole it. No ticket from the COVID police. <laughs> I gotta make fun of them and laugh about it. that's it for another adventure. Uh, we're running out of uh, COVID light as they say. <laughs> so uh, I'll head on home and we will see you on the next adventure.
adventure. Well, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. All right, we out.